Hello everyone, today we will introduce the HTML5 chart component in Jaspersoft Studio. The community edition of Jaspersoft Studio allows to work with the J3 charts, so basic chart functionality with minimal interactivity. The professional edition on the other side provides a more advanced kind of charts, the HTML5 ones. The HTML5 chart component in Jaspersoft Studio and Jasper Reports is based on the iCharts library. It supports many of the charts of the original library written in pure HTML5 and JavaScript. Let's now create a very simple report using some sample DB data and get our hands on the HTML5 charts. Let's choose the blank report template. We select sample DB. We enter our query. We choose all the fields. We proceed to next and finish. We will create a simple report with only a chart and we will put it into the summary band. So let's delete all the other bands and expand the summary one. We pick the HTML5 chart component from the palette and we drag it into the report area. The dialog is quite complex, but it gives you the ability to configure everything you need to render correctly your final chart. The first tab allows you to select the kind of chart you want to create or modify. As you can see here, there are different categories of chart. They are grouping depending on their shared feature. So for example, you will have column and bar chart, line and area, dual and multi-axis, and so on. A small information box on the bottom presents the internal details on the currently selected chart. For our sample, we will pick a simple pie chart. Let's now move to the data and configuration tab. This tab includes options for configuring chart dataset, chart properties, and hyperlinks. The option on this tab reflects the type of chart you selected. Considering our main dataset query, our final goal could be, for example, presenting a pie chart showing the amount of orders in different US regions. So it makes sense to use a slice expression here, the ship region. Ship region. We can leave the label expression empty, so it will reuse the region information we already put into the slice expression, otherwise we can easily customize the information. Since we want to count how many orders there are in a specific region, we can use the ship region as value expression as well. As aggregation function we will use count and we can choose a simple tooltip expression for decorating our slices. When configuring our chart, instead of constantly moving back to the main editor and preview the report, we can exploit the useful internal preview that allows to see how the chart will be rendered in the final report. So let's hit the Show Chart Preview button and see what happens. We can also resize the window in order to make the preview more clear. Okay, perfect. The button below allows to switch to the so-called advanced configuration. This is because all types of chart have been provided of a simple configuration with specific details that might be okay for many common scenarios. But when a more detailed configuration is needed, it would make sense to switch to the alternative configuration mode. Here you will be able to configure the structure of every chart modifying its underlying model. 
So in order to be able to perform modification here, you should get a more in-depth knowledge of the Jasper Reports iChart component pieces. Since the purpose of this video is only introductory, today we will not investigate this section. It's enough to let you know that everything you had configured in the simple configuration is of course available here in the advanced one. And you can do a lot more of course. I encourage you to give a look to the documentation and the tutorials available on the Jaspersoft website to know more. Finally, the most interesting part, the chart formatting tab. Here you can set a great number of properties that are the most common ones used with chart. You can see they are categorized depending on the topic they are related to. Title, legend, plot option, etc. Most of this property can of course be set using an expression or standard values like string, number or booleans. Whenever you change a property you can actually click on the review button on the top toolbar to refresh the chart rendering. But at this point it's probably more useful to rely on the auto refresh capability. This one here. Enabling it allow the chart to be rendered whenever a property change occurs. Please notice that the chart is not automatically refreshed when we are changing the tails on the data configuration tab. Let's see this auto refresh property in action. Let's change the title. Let's change also the font color of the title and put it in red maybe. Now we move to the font family and we choose a different one from the default. Example Taoma. And also a different font size. 24. Let's also add a border box around our chart. Border color, we pick a blue, radius, we put 10, and border width, we put something like 2 pixel. The question that might come natural is, are all these properties the only one available for configuring a chart? The answer is of course no. Since it was almost impossible to present them all in this section, we decided to expose in the advanced mode all the properties that can be automatically read from the iChart mobile. For every property, you have a tooltip that represents information taken directly from the iChart website. The properties that you see marked in yellow are those ones that have been edited and that are different from the original default values. Properties can be modified easily using the standard widget or switching to the expression box. You can also reset an edited property hitting the reset button, for example here, or you can remove a custom one created using the remove button. The filter red box is useful in order to quickly find a property and you can use the asterisk as wildcard. The context specific tab allows to set properties for advanced HTML5 chart configuration. Also this is out of scope for this demo video. Now that our chart is configured, let's confirm the configuration and close the dialog. Let's expand it. Let's save our report and let's try to run the report to see the final result. It 
Let's switch from the Java preview to the HTML one. From here we can see the interactivity we can have with the chart. This concludes this soft introduction to the HTML5 chart component and its basic configuration. I strongly suggest you to read the dedicated section in the Jaspersoft Studio online manual. There are a lot of useful information that expands what you saw today and more examples that are presented step by step. Thanks everyone for watching.